Praise the Lord. Amen. And we still have those on vacation. This time of the year, a lot of people are traveling. But we're glad you're here. Amen. For real. What a day to give thanks and praise to God. I know some of you were probably shocked as I was. I went to bed a little bit earlier. I was doing some work and went to bed. I was shocked when I turned the news on this morning. There is such a thing, I do believe, as divine intervention. And it does, and it's been quoted a lot by people that are not even church people that are talking about divine intervention. We know that some of our politicians are very flawed individuals, but God uses them for a purpose and for a reason, not because they are righteous in themselves, but because God puts kings on thrones and he removes them. God always has the final word, doesn't he? He always has the final word. Yes. Well, the, the little artwork that I used, I used it a little over a year and a half ago when we were talking about new beginnings. Uh, I was able to put Teen Challenge on the name of the door now. That door has opened. But you can, you can see our leaders, the one, some, some of them have big noses in the picture there, but I don't think they really look that way. But they're poking at the door very cautiously. When you're going forth to believe God for new beginnings, it is good to be cautious when you go through new doors. Uh, our leaders were made the decision that it was time to close out a business we had here and do something that was more kingdom appropriate ministry. Taking care of children was a good thing and a blessing to many people. But we had come to the place where we felt like that God had something in a different way for us to minister to people and minister to people's lives. And I give thanks to God for a little over a year and a half, the leaders of this church have stood strong, stood firm. And um, I even told them a little over a year and a half ago when they started discussing possibilities. I'd already been through this before myself with the other center that was started in Moore County. And we went through court after court after court gatherings and uh, I had the responsibility that uh, Rust had this time and I knew there would be some challenges to what was desired to see happen but God does always have the final word doesn't he? The I am God of new beginnings Father we thank you for where we are and what has happened this past week to open this door of great opportunities to minister to people that need healing, that are somewhat broken in their lives and need to be put back together that only you can do. And we thank you, Lord, for that. In Christ's name, everybody said Amen. Spring Lane Assembly of God is entering a new door of possibilities, a new beginning. I like Jeremiah's hope in Lamentations. It goes like this, because of the loving devotion of the Lord, we are not consumed, for His mercies never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Amen. Oh, yes. And Psalms 55 says, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy 
comes in the morning. There's been some weeping over this. There's been some prayers, lots of prayers, and some tears and weeping over what was desired to see happen here. And praise God. After the flood, God and Noah's family had a new beginning. The world has returned to a new innocence. The flood wasn't an act of wanton destruction by a capricious God, but it was judgment of evil and about restoring the goodness and beauty of his creation. Yes, God in his do-over elevates Noah as the new Adam, so to speak, placed once again in a garden on a high mountain with a commission to be fruitful and multiply the earth again. So therefore, new beginnings should always bring fruitfulness and multiplication of new people and resources. Does that sound good today here? Yes. When Noah had that commission from God, he says, multiply and replenish the earth. New beginnings have that element of new people, new resources. I've said this all of my ministry for many, many years. Resources will always gather and flow to the right ideas and the right things. It just happens. If you have the right thing you're doing and it's the right thing that God can bless, resources flow to that automatically. It's a beautiful thing to see happen. New beginnings should always bring fruitfulness. New people, resources. Noah, the righteous one in a wicked age, comes out the other side into a new creation, bringing about a new covenant of peace, life, new sons and daughters to be born. We all need what Noah needed, patience and hope for that new beginning. I know that the leaders of this church and all of you that have supported it, it has taken a lot of patience and perseverance and continuing to believe God. Amen. But God brings things to pass. Now this is important. To, I put this in the notes for a reason. Hope doesn't promise an instant solution. So in other words, the good things that happened this past week is good and it's opening the door for new possibilities but it won't be instant coffee it may be a little time for things to develop not instant but an eventual one Noah was just about to call it a day when he hears the cooing of the dove this is how the Bible describes it in Genesis 8-11. When the dove returned in the evening, there, there in his beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Yes, the leaf was more than a foliage. It was a promise of a new beginning. The bird brought more than a piece of a tree. He brought hope. God is always bringing hope to our lives, isn't he? And here it is, the realization of hope of a new beginning came Thursday night, July 11th, 2024, for Spring Lane Assembly. And there was some rejoicing. We almost had church there in that place. It was almost to be in church going on there. <coughs> Dreams take time to come to pass. Dreams take talent to come to pass. We've gone through a period of time I believe in God. And thank God because of the right people and the right talent, I give praise to God for the attorney that God used in this endeavor. What a, what a man. I believe he's a man of God. I believe God. He loves God. I believe he loves the work that T. Jones does. God is the author of new chapters and new beginnings. He's the voice behind a new song. Sometimes in our journey of faith, we just need a new song. Come on. 
And God will put a new song in our souls. And new life begins to come into us from that new song. God knows the way forward. I say God knows the way forward. No matter what the transition may bring. And it's going to be a transition time for all these new beginnings that are happening. That's okay. God will help guide and bring an opportunity for this church to begin again. I've often felt for so long this church was here and it has struggled at times. It had done better, it had done less. But God preserved it for, with a few people. Preserved it. This property, this six acres. Because something great is about to burst on the scene. Something powerful is about to happen. Listen, the I am God of new beginnings. Chronicles give new robes. The weary find new strength. The blind see again. The bound are set free. God's mercies and faithfulness will be new every morning. They shall bound up with wings and eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord. Yes. Yes. In the season of new beginnings, it's a time to leave the past behind. Don't look back, someone said. Don't look back. Something may be gaining on you. Don't be looking back. It's a time to look forward. It's time to go forward to new chapters that God will write. God is still writing this church's story and he's still writing your story today. Yes. Yes. Paul says in Philippians 3, brothers and sisters, I know that I have not yet reached that goal. But there is one thing I always do. Forgetting the past. Forgetting those things behind me. Straining, reaching forward to those things ahead. I press towards the goal of the high calling, the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. Someone has said this. <laughs> I like it. A new beginning and a great future always beats a great past every time. Think about that a little bit. That's something good to think about. In new beginnings, and this is such a good thing, in new beginnings, grace and miracles are revealed in those new beginnings. Jeremiah proclaims a word from God. People all the time looking for a word from God. All they got to do is open their Bible. There's a lot of words from God. <laughs> and Jeremiah proclaims a word from God. For I know the plans I have for you. Have it all planned out you, plans to take care of you, declares the Lord, not to abandon you, plans for your welfare, not for your disaster, for not for bad things, to give you a future and a hope. Oh, various translations of that Jeremiah 29 11. Yes. From the time Moses went from before Pharaoh until the time they crossed over the Jordan into the promised land. Some scholars have identified 80, 58 miracles God performed through Moses to bring them out, to bring them in. I want to ask a question. How many miracles did it take for God to get you out and bring you into all that he has? He may be still working on us, trying to bring us into all that he has. Come on. I like Isaiah as he proclaims the word of the Lord. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know? Shall you not know? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, streams in the desert. And then verse 21, he says, Then the people that I formed for myself, they shall know and they shall praise my name once again. Amen. That's now and in the future both. Grace and miracles are revealed when God does a new thing. Perseverance and spiritual hunger is the path to new beginnings. Behold, he says in James 5 11, we count them happy 
which endure, those who have persevered. He's speaking of those who have been tested and who have been tried. And he goes on with other parts of it. But he's talking about those who have been tested and tried. Happy are those who endure, those who have persevered. Zacchaeus' spiritual hunger drove him up on a sycamore tree for his experience with God. And I love Matthew 5, 6, and you, I know you love this as well as I do. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. New beginnings involve a spiritual hunger that drives us to God and moves us hunger for Him. Let your perseverance and spiritual hunger move you forward to a new place in God. I said, let your perseverance and your spiritual hunger move you to a new place in God. How many need a new place in God? Growing in God. Growing in the knowledge of God. Yes. Yes. And we can't, we can't leave out this part. This is a very important part. The heart of God, the heart of God must be your focus in your new beginning. There's so much that goes on in church life that doesn't have a lot to do with the heart of God. I know there's things, we need different things going on but we can never let other things going on in the church life take the place of the focus of the heart of God. Amen. The heartbeat of God. The heartbeat of God. We've got to do things that make the difference to the heartbeat of God. And the heartbeat of God is just one simple word. It's souls that need to be redeemed. It's souls that need to be restored. It's souls that need to be set free. Souls redeemed, ready for heaven. That's the heartbeat of God for broken people. Jesus invites all of them to his table. Yes, he invites those from the street, those that are lame, those that are blind. We see the great parable of the great supper. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in here the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and there's still more room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the house highway to the hedges and compel them to come to my house that my house may be filled. That's the heartbeat of God. That's the heartbeat of God. Matthew 21 14. Then the blind and the lame came and he healed them. That's what's going to happen here down that hallway. And it needs to happen here in the sanctuary as well. Listen. God's house of prayer is a place of deliverance from bondages where there is healing for broken minds, broken hearts, broken spirits and bodies, and broken families. God is providing Spring Lane Assembly a new beginning, a healing place for broken people, a God-inspired partnership with the ministry of God's church and the parent ministry of Teen Challenge and the ministry of the supernatural. That's a good partnership. Wow. In Esther 4.14, if you remain silent at this time, Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your fathers and family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position, Esther, for a time such as this. I put one of my favorite pictures of recent times, a small version of it. It shows Jesus at his table and it shows those people that needed healing. Those people from the highways and the hedges. 
those that were needing to come and sit at Jesus' table. Aren't you glad that Jesus opens the door for all to come to his house? He doesn't look for the elite around the table. He looks for the broken people that come to sit down with him and sup with him and have time communion with him. I'm so glad that God looks for imperfect people to join him at his table. I want our leaders and their wives to come. Jerry, Ian, would you come along? And Jerry, Edward, and, and uh, yes, and uh, George, would you come? I'm going to have a closing prayer, but I want y'all to be up close. Yes, and let's gather together.
beginning as a whole. We thank you, Lord. You are the Lord of Lord. You are the Lord of hosts among us. Bring good things to this property. Great things. And let this church have new sons and daughters born into the family. New sons and daughters that will join this group, this small group. There will be a larger group, a larger family to give praise to our God. We thank you, Father. We thank you in the name of the Lord. Let's lift our hearts and give praise to God right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We give praise to you by lifting up our hands and our hearts before you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. We glorify your name, Father. Touch Pastor Dave. He's suffering, Father. He needs an answer. Help him find that answer that he needs for his physical body. We will not stop believing for you to give him that answer to his physical body. In the name of Jesus, we need a healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless God for all He's done. Bless God for Christ His Son.
in real time. But he shall be in the great time. And I want to say it to this church. Don't think. Don't get this hard that you fall to few here. But one day, you'll walk in and this place is going to be filled. Not with people just coming to be coming, but people that God has sent in.